to get any hard facts. And do you know what I, yeah, do you know what I really want to, to hear is the probability of something happening or something not happening? Because we keep, the politicians just keep using the words could and may. People on both sides haven't been able to put forward sufficient facts. We've got caught up in all sorts of other things. And I would say that the majority of the people here and the undecided have not heard anything much that's going to actually convince them one way or the other. Okay. And I think it's very, very sad. Yep, they were a tough crowd. If you want to watch that programme again, you can do so on the iPlayer. For the next few minutes, we're going to try and give you some of those facts as best we can on the biggest issues surrounding the referendum from a couple of experts who can all say that they are 100% impartial on the issue of whether Britain should stay in or leave the European Union. Will Moy is from Full Fact, a group fact-checking the referendum claims of both Leave and Remain. And Professor Anand Menon, who is the director of the King's College Group, UK in a Changing Europe. First of all, let's just address the issue of impartiality. Why should our audience believe that you're any more trustworthy than politicians, for example? Well, we've been fact-checking since 2010, and we've been fact-checking on all kinds of issues, not just the EU referendum. And we are fact-checking the referendum because of over a thousand crowdfunders who made it possible for us to do this work. But we're not asking you to take our word for things. We have, on our website at fullfact.org, put all the sources we're using. You can go there, look at them, and judge them for yourselves. OK. We're a group of academics whose sole interest in this referendum is to allow people to know what the research says. So we're driven by the research findings, not by any desire to campaign for one side or the other. OK. Right, let's, let's start with immigration. Um, Leave say it's impossible to control immigration from within the European Union. Remain say migration is good for the economy and immigrants, especially those from the EU, pay more in taxes than they take out. Who is right? Will. Well, it's certainly the case that while we're in the EU, we are bound to freedom of movement, where anybody in any EU country can live and work and study in any other EU country. So we can't control the numbers of people from the rest of the EU who come here. So that, that's absolutely fair point to make. Of course, immigration from the rest of the world, we have a say over um, how we control that and who we allow in. Mm -hmm. On the economic point, this is one of the points where you can't actually say, you know, definitely here's exactly what's going on. A lot of um, the issues here are things where there is uncertainty. And lots of different studies, but basically they come out as saying it doesn't make that much difference to our public finances, immigration, one way or another. It's probably a little bit positive. Immigration from the EU is probably a bit better for us economically than from the rest of the world. Immigration from people who come here recently, probably a bit better for us economically than people who've been here a longer time. Is there anything you would add to that? Well, I'd say two things. Firstly, it's worth noting that most of the migration to this country is non-EU, yep. which we can control. And secondly, I think in terms of the economics, it's worth distinguishing between, if you like, the macro and the local. So, yes, it's probably the case that EU migration is good for the economy as a whole, but equally it's the case that you get areas of the country where you get particular concentrations of migration where there are genuine problems in terms of school places, hospitals, mm. GPs and things like that. So there's a, there's a distinction between the lived experience of some people and yes. the overall figures, if you well, like. Well, on that point about pressure on public services, Will there be less pressure on public services and more jobs for British people if the UK leaves the European Union? That will depend on what our policy on migration is. Yeah. Uh, it's perfectly conceivable we could leave the European Union and have the same number of migrants. Equally, we could leave the European Union and, depending on the deal we strike, say, OK, we're going to control our borders a lot more fiercely. Well, the Leave, the leave side say they would introduce a point system mm -hmm. which, they say, which they say would help control migration? Again, a point system is great in principle. It depends what, what scores you require. Mm. Australia gets more migration than us with a point system. You could, you could devise a point system that's tighter. You can devise a point system that's looser. What we don't know yeah. is what a future government will do. OK, let's uh, And, of course, we do have control over who comes here from the rest of the world, and we haven't reduced mm. immigration from the rest of the world dramatically. So we're talking there about assuming that we would make a significant change to the immigration policy we already have in the bit we do have control over. But Anand's particularly right on that. It's about your job, it's not about jobs generally. You've got to remember yeah. that, you know, yeah. that's the real story. Here. OK, on jobs then. Uh, unemployment is over 10% in the EU, almost double the rate in the UK. 
Remain say three million jobs in the UK are linked to trade with the EU. Leave say they could create more jobs if we left because there would be less regulation, less, less burdensome regulations, they say, in the workplace. Who wants to take that? Well, there's a whole variety of things there. Uh, to start with the three million jobs, I think the figure's probably slightly higher, but they use that very careful formulation linked to, yeah. which means it's extremely unlikely if we left that those jobs would go. Uh, those jobs depend on trade with other European countries. There is no suggestion from the Leave camp that if we leave the EU, we will stop trading. So actually, there's an implication in the way that phrase is used mm. that maybe these jobs will be at danger if we left, and I just don't think that's true. Okay. I mean, that's right, and nobody who's done those calculations about linked jobs linked to exports is saying all those jobs are on the line. People are saying some jobs are on the line, and actually most economists do believe that we will be worse off if we leave the EU, but there will be a price to pay. Mm. It's when they start putting precise numbers on it that you've got to start raising your eyebrows and being a bit careful with them. What about the Leave side saying if we left, there would be less regulation from EU in our workplace, therefore... Uh businesses would, would would be freed to create jobs. You're smiling the way I say that. Go on. Why, why well, I'm, I'm only smiling because I feel for your viewers because we're meant to be giving them the facts. And yeah. here's an area where we, we don't know what the government after a Brexit would do. So it's very hard to give you a... There are no facts about the future. Uh, it would be possible, should we desire to do so, to scrap every piece of EU legislation on our statute books. Mm. It would take a long time, possibly decades. There's no indication a future government would want to do that. Mm. Uh, and that's one of the frustrations, I suppose, about this referendum campaign, is a lot of it is about things that would happen in the future yes. and promises being made by people you know, who frankly aren't leading our government now and we don't know if they will be in the future. Yeah, and I, I, we were saying in the audience debate on Monday, in the end, I was saying, you're just going to have to make a judgment call, you know? Yeah. Um, right, the cost of being a member of the EU, the cost of being in this club. Last year, Britain paid 17.8 billion to the EU, got back 4.9 billion in the rebate, and another 4.4 billion for farm subsidies, for grants to poorer regions of the UK and so on. Is that correct? Well, those are the right set of figures and the way you're probably more familiar to, of hearing them is the £350 million a week figure that's emblazoned on buses at the that, moment. That's from and the Leave that, side? Yeah, that's that £18 billion, roughly speaking. Mm -hmm. um, what's actually going on here is that we would pay £350 million a week to the EU if we didn't have a rebate. We don't pay the rebate to the EU and get it back. We just don't pay it. So the, the funds are not pay. literally transferred not literally from Britain transferred. to no. the EU. So what we actually pay, what we send to the EU every week is £250 million. And then, as you say, they spend some money back in the UK. And that, on your figures, would be about £85 million a week that they spend in the UK. Obviously, they're spending it, not the UK government. We might choose to spend it differently if it was wholly in our control. OK. Just, I mean, just two things to add on that. Whilst this debate about our contribution is interesting, I think we need to see it in a broader light because what the contribution gets us is access to the market. Mm -hmm. And if many of the economists who write about this are to be believed, the gains we have from being in the market dwarf the contribution we pay. So don't just think about the membership fee we pay, think about what we get for that membership fee as well. Mm -hmm. But the second thing I think is equally important, which is whilst it's laudable, for all those people at your debate the other day to say we want facts. Politics isn't just about facts, it's about gut feelings as well. And at a certain point, you might just think, why are we giving hundreds of million pounds a week away? And that might just be something you feel. So the facts are a guide, but let's not kid ourselves. Emotion is central to all politics as well. Mm. OK. Right, Remain say the economic benefits of EU... Oh, we've already said that. You, you said that. That's what Remain say. They, the benefits outweigh the cost. Um, We've talked about that 350 million figure. So let me ask you about security. And again, I'll leave it to you. Let's see if we can get some facts here. Is Britain more or less at risk of, terror attack, of a terrorist attack inside or outside the EU? That is a horrible question to ask you, I know. But how would you answer that as, an imp from, you know, as working for an impartial organisation when we're trying to deliver only facts? Well, let me start by stating the obvious. The people who know best whether we're at risk of terror attacks know things the rest of us don't know. And it's been really interesting as a fact checker hearing heads of MI5 and heads of MI6 and former heads of MI5 pop up on different sides of the debate and give their opinion on this. 
And you can't really second guess that because they know things that we can't know. They have sources that we can't look at, that you can't look at and check for ourselves. The, there is a lot of cooperation within the European Union on law enforcement matters. There are things like the European arrest warrant, there is intelligence sharing and all of that sort of thing. There is a question about if we leave, does all that suddenly disappear? Mm -hmm. And actually, for example, you can look at Norway, which isn't a member of the European Union, which is negotiating something a bit like the European arrest warrant has negotiated, um, something a bit like the European arrest warrant, to suggest that there would be ways of trying to get similar kinds of cooperation if we weren't in the EU, and you would think that might be in everybody's interest. But you can hear already, all of that is what might happen, mm. what might be negotiated, and what expert do you trust? Okay. Um, I want to ask you about travel, because it's come up, uh, certainly in the BBC One debate we did with 18 to 29-year-olds, and I think it's come up quite a lot with your own organisations, whether, if Britain left the EU, it would be less easy than it is now to just get up, book a cheap flight, and clear off to somewhere in Europe. What would you say to that? Well, with apologies, I'd say possibly, but we don't really know. I mean, again, yeah. it all hinges on the deal we, we get. If right. we remain part of the single market, it'll make no difference at all. Even if we don't remain part of the single market, it depends on what government and private actors do. We could leave the single market altogether, so we're not covered by, say, the provisions on free roaming that we'll get next year in the EU. Mm -hmm. Our mobile phone providers might just say, well, actually, we'd look a bit bad if we reverted now, so we'll just keep it in place. Mm. You're, you're having to predict what an awful lot of different people are going to do under certain eventualities to know for certain. And so I'm sorry, I know that's not a great answer for your viewers, but I think it's probably the truth. Yeah, no, I, li I like it. I like the truth. <laughs> and that's the truth what we is can good. say. <laughs> we can't say what the outcome of all this will mm. be, but we can say what process kicks off if we do vote to leave, which is that we start a period of negotiations. And when the government tells the EU we're going to leave, mm. there's a two-year period that kicks off in which we're meant to try to negotiate the details of what that exit looks like. Mm -hmm. And in that set of decisions is one really big choice which is, does the UK want to stay part of the European Union's single market or not? Because you can leave the EU, stay part of the single market, which is where Norway is. There's a trade-off for that, which is the Norway accepts laws from the EU, Norway accepts free movement of people from the EU, Norway contributes money to EU countries. So, but Norway gets the, the benefits that people talk about of the single market, of free travel, easy travel, the larger market access and all the rest of it or we can go all the way out and then we get the control over immigration, control over laws, and we don't get some of those uh, economic benefits that people talk about and most economists um, would say exist. So that's a big choice that would have to be made after we all make our choice about whether we want to leave or not. Okay. And a lot depends on it. This is the calmest conversation that I've had about the EU since campaigning began. And I thank you both very much. Will Moy from Full Fact, which is a group fact-checking the referendum claims of both Leave and Remain. And Professor Anand Menon, who is director of the King's College Group UK in a Changing Europe. Thank you very much, thank both you. of you. Thank you. Really appreciate it.